Okay, everyone, good morning. <clears throat> I am gonna begin as it's 9.02 and it appears that most people are here. So we are gonna start this morning by talking about correction and markers. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you here on the screen, I did a dictation yesterday, and so I'm going to highlight that option. I'm going to highlight that dictation I did yesterday, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit. And when I do that, this box comes up that says, Should Scope Load the Speech Engine? We want to make sure that we have a check in that little white box, and we want to click on OK. That's going to load the speech engine. And we have to have Dragon loaded when we want to do correction. So we always want to make sure that, that the speech engine is, in fact, uh, loading when we go in to do this. The, um, that window didn't show up. What, babe? What didn't show uh, up? Should scope load the speech engine. Okay, let me do it again. I think I might have corrected all of that one. I'm going to have to choose a different one anyway. Okay. Sorry about that. So this is, no, thank you. So this is the box. Should scope load the speech engine. We simply put a check in the box and we click on OK. Now, what you've got, what a lot of you have been working on this week is, and, and last week, is adding markers. Um, and some of you did not um, notice the import markers portion of creating your user. So we had to direct a few of you to that. But um, correction mechanism Let's see, correction is not, the, the engine is not loading for me. So let me try a different one. Even though I'm clicking on scope loads of speech engine, if when scope, the edit screen opens, it does not prompt you to load your Dragon profile, then you will not be able to do correction. Now, see here it says loading the voice data at the bottom. And you'll notice that the, the status bar is green, which means it's just telling, it's telling you that it's busy. So you want to be patient, and you want to wait for that voice data to load before you can actually begin doing the correction mechanism. And it's going to take a little while. And the longer your dictation was, the longer it may. Don't worry, just be patient. And we can't start anything anyway until that data is loaded. So while it's loading, let me explain to you what we use markers for. We call a marker um, anything that we're going to do, we're going to say to bring forth, say, a question mark meaning a Q, maybe a Q period or a Q colon, um, or an A, Q being question, A being answer. You're also going to have markers for your speakers. And that's going to be like the judge. For me, the judge is always speaker one. So anytime the judge is speaking and I hear the judge speaking, I will say B1. And that will bring up the representation of the judge. Now, um, I just want to time out for a minute and show you on the screen that my open user profile dialog has appeared. And we need to open the user profile before we can actually do correction. So I'm going to select the appropriate user. I know that what you're seeing right now is, oh my goodness, why does Adria have so many users? I have so many users because I work with so many different people and I work with so many different devices. I use a headset sometimes. 
Sometimes I use my mask. Sometimes I use um, just an external mic. And so I have different user profiles for all of those different things. You probably only have one right now and that is fine. No worries. You don't ever have to have more than that if you don't want to. So I've selected my user and it's gonna finish now loading the data. So let's go back to our conversation about markers. So when you're listening to audio from, that you're gonna be listening to, that's from a court session, you may have a judge, you may have um, a plaintiff's attorney and a defense attorney, or if it's um, work for the states, you may have a prosecutor who works for the state but is gonna prosecute the case. Um, if it is a juvenile matter, you may have a juvenile representative, you may have a representative from child services, things like that. So you may have multiple uh, speakers or what we call markers in a job. And what we do is we create markers for generally speaker one through 10. And we also create markers for the question and the answer. We generally create multiple markers. And what I'm gonna do now that my job is loaded, I'm gonna maximize my screen. And I'm gonna click on this image here, which is the vocabulary editor. Do you all see it? It looks like a little person with a little bubble and a pencil. And so when I click on that, that is gonna open our Dragon vocabulary editor. And once the editor is open, if we go down here to display and we click on custom words only, then it's gonna show only what we have added to our vocabulary. And this is very important because for the most part, when you come into the vocabulary editor, you want to go and look at what you have added because that's what's most important really. Everything else, um, you may end up retraining words that Dragon has there for you, but you're gonna mostly add and delete words from custom words only. So what I want you to notice here is that I have multiple things for my A. I have ACO and ACO, and sometimes I also have AMAC. Um, I have CUCO and QCO, and sometimes I have QMAC. You can have all three of them trained and use the one that feels better on your tongue. We're all different. It doesn't matter if you were raised in the same family. It's still, the way we speak is still different. Each person is different. And what rolls off your tongue the best is what's right for you. So what's right for one person is not gonna necessarily be what the next person prefers. And so what I'm trying to tell you is, that's fine. No worries. That's why we provide you with multiple options because not everybody likes the same thing. I tend to like to say ACO and QCO, but when I start going really fast, I learned several years ago that my Q started sounding more like a KU, which is why I added KUKO, because when I get going really fast, I don't enunciate that Q as well. And so I just added the pronunciation of cuckoo so that it would expect that sort of thing. When I say echo and I'm going really, really fast, it tends to sound a little bit more like echo. <clears throat> and so I added that pronunciation. And so that's why we have pronunciations different pronunciations for Q&A. One, to give you choice, <clears throat> pardon me, and two, to make Dragon understand you better once you get up there in speed. 
Right now, things are going nice and slow, though it may still be challenging for you, and that's okay. It's okay for it to be challenging at a slow speed. You're still getting the idea of what am I supposed to be doing? And so listening and repeating, you know, I know that some of you right now are thinking, I'm never going to get this. It's crazy. But believe it or not, in seven weeks, you are going to be this remarkable machine, this dictating machine. And you are going to be dictating at 220 words per minute in seven weeks. And I know you're thinking, Adria, you are crazy. And while that is true, I am crazy indeed. Um, you are going to be able to do this. And it's going to be so exciting. One of the things that I want to share with you, when I was in the position you're in now, just learning how to listen and repeat, I was feeling very overwhelmed. I was feeling claustrophobic when I would put the mask on my face. And... I just thought I'd never be able to do it, never. Because every time I seem to get in the groove of things, I'd lose a whole sentence. So there's a few things I wanna share with you. First, sometimes, I know this doesn't make a lot of sense, but trust me, sometimes it actually is better to close your eyes while you dictate and listen. Focus, like don't let anything else be a part of your focus. That's why I closed my eyes in the beginning. Because if I closed my eyes, then I wasn't focusing on anything else in the room. And my eyes couldn't be a distraction. You know how they say that when someone loses one of their senses, their other senses get greater? Like if someone is blind, their hearing is better? This is very much true. So if you close your eyes while you're dictating, you might be able to actually focus only on the sound you're hearing. So that's one suggestion. Another suggestion is to listen for words in a group that can easily be repeated. I say two to three words. So I might listen and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here today to have a trial. Do you see what I mean? Like in groups, little groups of words, because you can remember little groups and then regurgitate what you've heard. And one of the really important things is that when you lose something, and <clears throat> what I mean by when you lose something, when you when you can't remember the, the, the phrase that you just heard, forgive yourself and move on. And some people need a verbal forgiveness. And I did. I needed a verbal, I forgive myself. And my verbal, I forgive myself became quack, quack. And <laughs> yes, I did just make the sound of a duck. And it doesn't have to be quack quack and could be something completely different. But what happened was when I heard a sentence and I was about to say it and I lost it, I would just say quack quack and then listen to the next thing. And I would train my quack quack to enter um, carrots. So I'm going to show you how I create it. I click on add and in the first box, spell or type the words to add to the vocabulary. I hold down the shift key and I hit the number six, one, two, three times. That gave me a little carrot, three little carrots, that's what they're called. And then in the spoken form, I just type in quack, quack. And then if you have it set to, I want to train the pronunciation, Things like that, and it's me like train my quack quack. And save. So if you noticed, I trained it four or five times. That's because none of us sound the same every time we say something. 
And so it's good to give dragon an idea of the many ways I might say it. Um, so I tried it slower and faster because sometimes we're going to speed up and we're going to say quack, quack. And sometimes we're going to say quack, quack. And that might sound similar, but it's not really. So now I've trained it. So um, one other thing I need to share with you is the untranslates. You're probably wondering what the heck is that? An untranslate really will come in handy. For instance, one of the things you are going to notice is that there are going to be names that, that come up that are not going to be in the dragon vocabulary. I'm, I live in Southwest Louisiana. Um, and the place in Southwest Louisiana that I live is a largely, um, French population for a long time. And so a lot of the names here are French names. And so my name included. And so those names are not always in the dragon vocabulary. A lot of Anglo-Saxon, like English names, um, those are in there. And I notice a lot of you in Trinidad have a lot of the same names we have here. So obviously, um, people made a stop on the way uh, from Europe over to the Americas and, and hung out on, on the islands, and some of you of them stayed there. I noticed the name Frederick. Um, that is a name that's very, very common here. And so the, the names that are uh, more cultural, you will find not so much in the vocabulary, and you may have to add them. Not a problem. However, you cannot add something to the vocabulary while you are dictating. Now, you can turn off your mic and you can go into the vocabulary, but you cannot add it while you're dictating. So let's say you're on a roll and you don't want to stop right now. And so you could just place your cursor in the untranslate field and type in the name that is not in the vocabulary, like my name. Though it is spelt the riot, it is pronounced Terrio. And so uh, Dragon never gets that pronounced. It never gets it right. And so you could just put the name, or it could be a name of a company, or it could be a name of, um, a, a drug, a medication. And so you could put it in there and, and when that word comes up again, instead of saying omniprazole or something difficult, you could just say tran2. And it would put whatever word was in the untranslate field in the text for you. So that is really, really helpful when you're dictating and something that you're gonna learn to really appreciate. And so that's what these untran fields are when we go to custom words only, and we just say tran one, tran two, tran three, and we have maybe 10 or 20 of them trained, but you have the possibility of having up to 300 speakers and up to 300 untranslates. You'll never use that many of either of them, so don't worry about that. With the speakers, they work in the same way. So let's say that the judge is speaking. In the States, um, the judge is referred to as the court. But in Canada, it is referred to as the crown. And since you guys are a British, uh, territory are you not or were at one time maybe there's a lot of you have more of a British accent than an American English accent and I think you guys spell some things the way the Brits do as opposed to the way um, Americans do um, and so I don't know if you say the crown or the court but either way you would put what you want to appear in your transcript or your editing screen, that's what you type in in your speaker field. 
And then when you say speed one, the court will come out. If I said speed two right now, the crown would come out. If the one of the attorneys is Mr. Jones, then I would type it in like this. And Mr. Jones would appear when I say speed three. And then over on the right-hand side of the speaker field, you will notice that it says COL. That stands for colloquy. And so I just want to go over to my screen here and I want to show you real quick. If This is a hotkey. This is a set of hotkeys. Alt R1 will enter the speaker. Do you see how that did right here? And then if I do Alt or Q, that enters the question. If I do Alt or A, that enters the A for answer. If I enter Alt or 3, then that puts in Mr. Jones. Now, if I go over here where the COL is and I click on this drop down, and I select buy, now watch. Now I'm gonna do Alt or three again, but now do you see it says buy Mr. Jones? And so this is often what you see after there's an examination buy, then you'll see a hard return by Mr. Jones because that's telling you who's doing the questioning right now, right? So those are some nifty hotkeys that are gonna help you to enter things more quickly. And I'm gonna show you some more hotkeys um, that you can use while you're doing correction. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn correction on by clicking on the A with the little pencil up there. I don't know if you heard that, but the minute that I hit the A and I clicked on some text, Dragon selected an utterance. And what is an utterance? You don't have any control over what an utterance is. Dragon decides this is where the utterance is gonna start and this is where it's gonna end. The only thing that may that you may have some control over is, for instance, um, when you breathe, many, many times when you breathe, that is where an utterance will be created, where it will start or finish. So that's the closest you're gonna get to controlling where an utterance is, and that's okay. In the beginning, if your utterances are very long, that's okay that's very very common and so as you do correction mechanism your utterances will get smaller and smaller which is nice because they'll be easier to listen to now once it highlights the utterance if you want to hear it again hold down the alt key and hit the p as in paul that the deceased was killed by the defendant. That's right. So now I can just click on, I can hit the page down key. Okay, the first thing I noticed, perhaps you did too, is that um, too fine was actually defined, but also proved beyond a reasonable doubt as defined, D-E-F-I-N-E-D, -E to you that the killing was done with malice of forethought. Now I must explain to you and define. Now, let me show you one of my favorite hotkeys in correction. That is control D as in dog, control D. You see what happened there? It deleted the word it was next to. 
So control D will delete the whole word it's touching or on, which is nice because instead of doing delete, 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 or backspace, 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 you just do control D. And then you can just type in the right word and define the word malice. Malice in the law of homicide. I think that there was another incorrect word right here. Now notice that I'm highlighting this portion. That's because I don't want to hear the whole utterance again. I just want to hear that section. So now with it highlighted, I'm going to do Alt P as in Paul. Alt P. I hear a term apart that is a technical term. I don't even know if that's right. So now that I've corrected this, I'm going to hit page down. Okay, importing with wickedness. And just cause or okay, and excluding. So I can do control D, control D, control D, and excluding just cause or excuse. There. And remember that when we're doing correction mechanism, set a timer on your computer or on your phone and only do this for five to 15 minutes. If you don't correct the whole thing, that's okay. The reason I only want you to do it for five or 15 minutes is because for five minutes, I know that you can be completely and totally focused and you can actually do a perfect job. After that, we start to lose focus. We start to get distracted. And so I would rather you do five minutes of perfection than an hour with three mistakes because mistakes that you make will come back to bite you on your next dictation. So you don't wanna make any mistakes when you're doing correction. You really, really, really want to focus on perfection. Now, you remember I told you a minute ago that I really wasn't even sure of whether this was a term apart or if it was maybe another word, if I don't feel like I'm certain of what this word was, I am better off to toggle this correction so that it cannot be learned by Dragon. And to do that, I would click on this red and green circle up here. And when I do that, it turns all of the text in the utterance red meaning Dragon's not gonna learn anything from anything in that utterance. And that's the way I want it, because I don't know what I said. And if I don't know what I said, well, I can't expect Dragon to know what I said, right? So we just don't want even to, we don't want Dragon to even attempt to learn from it. So we just move on. And if the one thing that we got right is the only thing that we can learn from, well, then that's okay. And remember that after we do correction mechanism, we always go to utterance summary and we re-listen and we make sure that what is in the corrected text matches exactly what we hear ourselves say. If it does not, uncheck it. That's another way of saying, Dragon, don't learn. Don't learn from this. I messed up. And you're only human. You're going to mess up. And, and you're learning right now how to speak at speed. So even though you have an absolutely beautiful conversational voice, and normally you speak very well, please keep in mind that it is very normal to get a little sloppy with your language when you are learning to dictate at speed. 
just always be honest with yourself. Listen and say, well, I was sloppy. I don't want Dragon to learn from that because I'm not going to sound like that every time. So don't learn from it. Now, there are some things that we just say a little bit differently than the person next to us. We, we want to teach Dragon that this is how we say it. And we're going to say it like that every time. All of us have little differences in the way we say certain words. And it's okay. I don't expect you to really change so much the way you speak. You're already learning to speak faster. So all that I hope you'll do is pay attention to what I call clipping your words, which is making sure that the beginning of your word and the end of your word is tight. So you would say, you would make sure that your words are not running together. Because when your words run together, that's generally when Dragon has a difficult time understanding what you're saying. So that's correction and utterance summary. I'm going to just show you, um, if you're done with correction and utterance summary, and you just want to listen to the audio and maybe edit it. Because remember, we have two words, correction and editing, and they don't mean the same thing. Correction means what we do with dragon, meaning we listen to what we said and make sure that the text that dragon wrote matches that exactly. And the second thing is that so correction is when we do this correction mechanism, this process. Thank you, Chriselle. I appreciate you. Um, and editing is when we're just, we're not having to pay attention to all those rules. Like if you didn't say it, you can't write it. All those rules go away when we're editing. And when we're editing, we're just listening and saying, oh, okay, well, we need a, a period right here. And we need a question mark right here. And this needs an apostrophe. And this needs to be uppercased. You understand? It's just regular editing. But we have some things that make it a little faster. So here we go. Uh, let's say we need a period right here. If I hold down the control key and I hit period, it's going to put in a period, two spaces, cap the next. Same thing with if I want a question mark, only control question mark puts in a question mark, two spaces, caps the next. And by the way, you know your laminated sheets that you got from us? There's a green sheet, I believe, that should have your hotkeys on it. Sometimes they're different colors. I think it might be the green sheet. Is it the green sheet? They are green and orange or the right so the orange those are going to be your step-by-step -step instructions but the green ones those are going to have your hotkeys kind of greenish yellow those are going to have your hotkeys on them but you can also see your hotkeys right here on your screen under hotkeys so i don't expect you to know them all right now but you'll get to know them with time and, and you'll have your favorites. Um, some you're just going to use more than others. The control period and the control question mark you are going to use all the time. The control D to delete a word, you are going to use that all the time. Um, another thing that, that is really something you're going to use all the time, control I. When on a word, we'll initial cap that word. If you do it again, control I, it brings it back down. Almost all of our hotkeys are toggles, which means you do it once and it ha you know, something happens and you do it again and it undoes it. Um, control U, uppercase is the whole word. Control U again. will undo that, that cap, okay? 
um, when in the States, when someone is spelling something, we have to stitch it. Do you know what I mean by stitch? Um, this is, this is stitching. Let's see. I don't think there's a name. I'll just choose any word. So if I do control hyphen, this is what happens. Do you see the word established? I don't know if you guys do it in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the States, when, yes, we do. Thank you, Leslie Ann. Um, when we have to do that now, there is an option that if, when you did control dash, if it stitched it, but it didn't uppercase it as well, that's an option. And I want to show you that if you look way up at the top of your screen under the word hotkeys, there's a little icon that looks like a piece of paper with a check mark and a pencil. If you click on that, that's the options. And generally, options for editing are under editing and scoping. So if you go to the editing and scoping tab, about midway, right under zoom factor, you will see stitch capitalizes word. And if you have a check in there, then it will automatically capitalize it when you stitch. And I like it that way. I think it, it saves you a, um, another keystroke because you can do control U to uppercase, then control hyphen to stitch. But I rather do less things in one. So I just make sure that this is checked and apply and okay so that when i do say okay i want this name control hyphen i want it uppercase and it automatically will uppercase it when you stitch it um let's see what other um i don't know if you guys use a whole lot of parentheses or brackets in your transcripts but Control open parentheses will put parens around the word you're on. Do it again and it goes away. Control open bracket will bracket a word. Do it again and it goes away. Now, let's say you have a statement that you want to do. So let's say I want this whole statement to be in parens. So I highlight it and I do control open paren and you can see that I have now the whole statement in parens. I can do it again to undo it or I can do brackets and again to undo it. So whatever you highlight, and this is true for just about anything. Like for instance, let's say you need to uppercase this whole statement. Control U uppercases the whole statement. Control U again, will lower. Control I will initial cap anything. Normally initial capping in a, in a statement has more to do with if it's the title of a book or a movie or something like that. So that may come in handy. Um, when you are doing correction with markers, it's important to remember that when you correct with a marker, you have to correct to the written form. So, um, in order to really show you this, I'm going to turn on my mic and I'm going to dictate some markers so that I can show you how to correct them.
Okay, good. So my B7 came out space seven. So I need to make sure that I correct it to look like asterisk speaker seven asterisk. This is my B8. It has to look like asterisk speaker eight asterisk. And this is always the way you're going to correct your markers. You're really only going to correct your markers a little bit in the beginning because once you have them, you have them, and that's going to be the end of that. So um, mostly people have problems with speak two sometimes, getting speak two. That's very common. Um, one of the things that you do is do correction on your markers push them through, teach dragon. And once you have your markers down pat, you're really not going to mess with that again, most likely. Okay. So, um, and, and when it's a Q, it has to be asterisk Q asterisk. When it's an A, it has to be asterisk A asterisk. Now you're thinking, okay, well that's all good and fine, but how do I make it look right in my transcript? Well, we click on reformat and we click on Fix corrected markers. And see, it fixed them all up. Now, you'll notice that speaker four through speaker nine did not change. That's because over on the right in my speaker list, nothing is in the field. So, if, there, if I type in Mr... Mr. Tran and Ms. Lee and Mr. Brown and Ms. Green. Now watch these speakers. I can do it again. Reformat, fix corrected markers. And There's Mr. Tran. Oh, I didn't put anything for me. There you go. So you can use fixed corrected markers as, as much as you like and that will bring in the proper format of the word. Okay, so we only have a little time left, and let me see if there's anything else that I really wanted to cover. Basically, um, Most of your Windows hotkeys like Control A, Control C, um, you know, Control A selects all that works in here. Um, control C is copy, Control V is paste. All those Windows hotkeys work in your SpeechCat applications, so keep that in mind. Um, I really want you all to. Uh, as soon as class is over, I want you to go to the transcriptionist program on ACE, and I want you to go to um, lesson 5.5 and 5.6, because those are about breathing and how to control your breathing. And I really would like for you to listen to those exercises. It's just audio files, but I want you to listen to them. And um, when you're learning voice writing, it's going to be really important. Your breathing is going to be really important. If any of you have asthma, please uh, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You might want to keep your 
pump handy and use your inhaler if you've got asthma because you can get stressed during dictation. So be cautious, be good to yourself, be kind to yourself. Remember that breathing is critical for us humans. <laughs> we have to do it. So don't forget to breathe. And what, what you're going to learn, you're going to learn your own natural um, cadence of breathing while you're dictating. Remember that they're, you're going to notice in the beginning that there are going to be times when you're saying the last word with the last of your breath and it's trailing off and you can barely hear that word because you're at the end of your breath. That's okay. You're going to see that a lot right now. That's normal. That's absolutely normal. Don't worry about it. Don't be hard on yourself. Just remember that you can only do what you can do. Try to learn how to take a nice deep breath when you can. And as you are dictating, your breath will be gently coming out. So remember that that's what you're going to do whenever you end that last breath. Take a nice deep breath. And what I sometimes do is I'll just take the mask away just a little bit so I can take my nice deep breath. Because remember that when you're speaking into a mask, we're releasing that carbon monoxide into that mask. And you don't really want to be breathing that back in. So it's okay to just literally pull it away. Even if you do what they call the tilt mechanism where you just do this or this or this. Whatever feels better to you but you want to take in a nice, clean breath of oxygen, not carbon monoxide. Oh, you can't see me? Can you see me now? Okay, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so I take a breath this way, this way, or this way. Usually, it's just this. You know, but it's whatever's most comfortable for you, whether it's a side tilt, a bottom tilt, or a top tilt. Whatever makes you feel better. But you want to get a nice, deep breath of air. Okay, I don't want any of you passing out during your, exam, your, your, your work there, okay? So, believe me when I tell you this is only week two. You're doing great. You are doing, I'm so proud of you all. You're doing great. I know a few of you have a few things to catch up with. Not a problem. If you find yourself stuck, you need to text me on the, the Skype chat and let me know. I can dial in. I can work with you. And, and I'm more than happy to do that. So please know that I'm here for you. That's, that's my purpose, is to assist you when you don't understand things. And there are going to be, also it's wonderful to have fellow students that you can lean on because some of you are going to do great on certain things and not so great on others. And then the others will do great on those things and not so great. So helping each other is a beautiful thing. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with you taking exams together. I have no problem with that at all. It's good to help each other out. It's good to learn in groups. Remember that exams and quizzes, there's only one real purpose for them. And that is to see if you are understanding the lessons. That's it. I want you all to have perfect scores. So that's why you can take every quiz three times, right? That's why you can do your dictations as many times as you want. And by the way, Michelle is going to be working on getting you some more dictations at lower speeds, but these dictations will be non-mandatory. You do not have to do them. Someone asked yesterday for more 
at a slower at 120 and that's fine so we'll get you more at 120 more at 130 more at 140 but you will only be responsible for what's on the list if it's not on the list you do not have to do it it is only going to be there so there'll be no requirement in other words it's not going to show you the little oh you have to have an 80 percent on this because they're only going to be there for um, experience if you want it. If you feel like you would feel more confident with more at that speed before you move on to the next, okay? If you do more dictations, please add those dictations. Type in the name of the dictation and put in every grade you get on those dictations because if you do extra dictations i want to give you credit for them that's not going to hurt the people that don't do it but if you are on the cusp of um you know at the end of the course you can have a certificate of achievement which basically means you finished the class you did it or you can have a certificate of excellence meaning that you went above and beyond and there's actually three uh, a certificate of completion means you finished it achievement is a certain um, number up and then excellence are the highest numbered scores any extra work you do and you make note of on your worksheet that you will turn in at the end of the course I will see that and I will take that as you did extra work and if you're teetering on the in-between line between achievement and excellence, I'll give you the excellence because I see that you worked harder. And it, for me, it's all about your success. My goal is to have every one of you have a certificate of excellence at the end of this course. And I, I know for a fact that you can do it. I have no doubt. So be calm, be peaceful, get your work done. Let me know if you need me. I'm here for you. I'm sure you've all noticed that Michelle is here for you. And she is fantastic. Michelle is the technical expert at AudioScribe. She is the hardware expert at AudioScribe. And anytime something happens that is hardware related um, generally I'm gonna ask Michelle to dial in and have a look so um, you've noticed that she's helpful to you all on the Skype thread um, with with normal software stuff but uh, she's all around just a magnificent amazing person and I rely on her so much. She is my right hand and my first cousin, by the way. <laughs> so um, this is a family business. And so um, she's magnificent and she's always there for you if I'm not. So there's always gonna be one of us, if not both of us available for you all. So please know that, know that I'm tickled pink that means excited in American language. <laughs> that all of you are working hard and doing great. Those of you who are behind, no worries. It's the start of the term. You're going to be fine. This week is a very slow week. You don't have a lot to do this week. I really would like you, more than anything else, if you're all caught up and some of you are even way ahead, and that's fine and great. Um, just woke, please focus on understanding correction, play with your editing keys, and um, make sure that your markers are working. Those are your most important things right now. And, and know that you have Michelle and I whenever you need assistance. Um, but please know that if you don't let us know about what's going on with you, we don't know. So let us know. You can email us as well. 
if if you don't know how to understand something you don't know how to ask a question you can just say i have something strange going on and i don't even know how to explain it could somebody just dial in we will do that okay and all of you have been great for the dial-ins you've quickly given me your passwords and we've been able to dial in and get anything fixed so i thank you for that um, i will attempt to have this video up tomorrow morning no later than uh 10 or 11 a.m okay thank you all for attending today and being so wonderful and i look forward to seeing you next week for now bye bye